Welcome to On the DOT. On today's episode, we speak to Indiana State Police Sergeant Todd Ringle. July 1st was the one-year anniversary of Indiana's hands-free law going into effect. Sergeant Ringle shares how the law has impacted the motoring public and how state law enforcement has been working with the public. Sergeant Ringle explains that ISP has taken an educational approach and gives some answers to frequently asked questions about hands-free Indiana. He also talks about how summer travel is expected to change this year as restrictions are lifted from COVID-19 and what the motoring public can do to ensure the safety of their fellow drivers and road workers around the state. Before we begin, please take a moment and download the NDOT app for Apple and Android devices. You can also listen to previous episodes of On the DOT by searching NDOT on YouTube. Now let's join NDOT Southwest Communications Director Jason Tiller for his conversation with Sergeant Todd Ringle. Hands-free is now the law in Indiana. That means you can't have a mobile device in your hand while driving. Help make Indiana roads safer. Learn about the new law at handsfreeindiana.com. Welcome to On the DOT. I'm Jason Tiller, Communications Director for NDOT Southwest, and uh, I'm very uh, happy to be joined by Indiana State Police Sergeant Todd Ringle. Uh, Todd, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Jason. How are you doing? I am doing very well. It's an honor to have you on. Of course, we did this last year about this time when we had our uh, Indiana hands-free law that went into effect on July 1st of last year. Uh, But tell tell you what, what a time for that law to go into effect. You know, you're right, because, you know, we're right in the middle of covid uh, a lot of things are going on. A lot of law enforcement agencies were basically pretty reactive versus proactive. You know, we changed the way we were doing things. We were trying to avoid contact with the public for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, we were still out there answering calls and, and so forth, but the number of traffic contacts obviously went down. So when that law went into effect last July, you know, we typically start enforcing that law pretty aggressively. You know, we know that going out and stopping vehicles and giving a lot of warnings the first several months is very important. And we really weren't able to do that because of COVID. Uh, So we got a late start. Uh, We did do our education push, but you know, a lot of people are not on social media. Some people don't watch the news. So it's it's a never-ending battle with educating the motoring public on, on laws. But, you know, we did have a, a rough start. Uh, but I will say that things are starting to get better. Uh, we are seeing fewer and fewer people driving down the roadways, holding their cell phones, but we have a long ways to go. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of, one of my questions for you, Todd, was... You know, when a law like that goes into effect, you're going to have obviously a lot of people who have habits and you're going to have holdouts and people who don't hear about it. And my understanding was that even if we hadn't had COVID, there would have been kind of an educational period there where if you had pulled over someone for being on their phones, it would have been more of a, you know, let's let's talk about what you did wrong here and um, let's correct the problem. Is that, is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Education is very important. You know, we can't expect the motoring public to understand that on a particular date, like July 1st of, of 2020, that this new law was going to go into effect. And if we, if you get stopped on July the 2nd, you're going to get a ticket. That's not the way it works. We know that a lot of, no, we know a lot of people are, I'm not going to say totally clueless, but they just don't get that information. Um, so education is very important. You know, we, we put information out on social media sites. We expect, or we depend on the news media also to put great information out about our laws, but again, stopping motorists and giving them warnings and explaining the law is also very, very important. You know, there are times that I'm still stopping motorists for the left lane law violation. And, you know, that law has been in effect for over two years now. Uh, but still, there's a lot of people that are totally clueless about that law. So it is, it's never ending. Um, so, you know, we have to pick and choose when we give warnings, when we give tickets. You know, it's to the point now, you know, it's been one year. Uh, we are starting to see officers issuing a lot more traffic tickets now because we've had a year. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, enough is enough. I mean, we got we to gotta enforce this law. This is a great law. 
And uh, I really believe if we can get more people to put their phones down, we will definitely see fewer problems and deaths on our highways. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not like this is a new concept either. I mean, as long as we've had texting and, um, you know, the cell phones have become smarter uh, over the years, we've had people who've had their phones in their hands. We've seen the fatalities. There have been pushes nationally, not just, you know, uh, you know, by law, but like, you know, the cell phone companies, they say don't text and drive. It's it's become common sense at this point not to text and drive, not to be on your phone and drive, not to drive distracted. And so, I mean, really the law that went into effect in July of last year, that was more of a, okay, now we're we're serious. We, we, we need you to stop doing this. Is that right. about right? No, I, I, I totally agree. You know, we had the texting law that went into effect in 2011, and we really thought that that law was going to change a lot of things. But unfortunately, the way the law was written, it was a very difficult law to enforce. Matter of fact, very few traffic tickets were ever issued because we had to be able to prove that the person is actually texting. And that is extremely difficult to do for, from 10, 15 feet away. There were too many things that people could do legally on their phone. So therefore, it was, it was just something that we weren't able to enforce. So when this new law went into effect last July, we really, we really think that this is the law that's going to make the big difference. Because, you know, we know when you talk to people, most people will agree that using their phones while they're driving is distracted. Mm-hmm. But there wasn't a law that says you can't do it. And, and there's so many people that think that they can do it a little better than somebody else. That, you know, they think that I'm okay. You know, I've never had a close call. Uh, I may run off the roadway a couple times here and there, but I've never had a crash. So they, they're willing to take that risk. But I'm here to tell you that we have crashes on our highways every single day that's caused by distracted driving. And, you know, it's kind of funny because I've had people ask me over the last several weeks, if not maybe even a couple months, is this new law making a difference with the distracted driving crashes? And I'll be honest with you, that is a very difficult question to answer simply because when we investigate a crash, we have to figure out what the primary cause of that crash is and who's at fault. And what happens a lot of times is, let's say you have a driver that's driving down the highway, they have their smartphone in their hand and they're scrolling through their emails and they're approaching an intersection, the light's green for them, but because they're scrolling, they're not paying attention. They don't notice the light turning yellow and now it's red. And all of a sudden they go through a red light and they collide into a vehicle that had the green light. So the police arrive, we investigate the crash, we're able to determine that the car disregarded the red light, but what do you think the odds are that the driver that was holding his phone, scrolling through his email, is going to tell the officer, hey, I wasn't paying attention, I was on my smartphone. That very small. Not Yeah, you're right. It, it's not going to happen. Um, so therefore, there's no information in that crash report that the driver was on his cell phone or her cell phone. And the number one or the, the cause of the crash is going to be listed as driver disregarding the automatic signal. So again, there are a lot of crashes that are caused by distracted driving that are never documented as a distracted driving crashes. So it's going to be difficult to determine whether this new law is actually reducing those crashes. I, I really think though, within a number of years, I hope anyway that the number of people killed on our highways will go down. Um, You know, there's, there's no doubt that if we can get everyone to put their phones down, we should see fewer people die on Indiana highways. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes for not only just your phone, but also for, um, you know, eating and driving, putting on makeup and driving, things like that. You know, and, and we do see some, some crazy things and, you know, we see a lot of people, eating. Uh, We see, just like you said, people putting makeup on, shaving. Uh, I've seen people brush their teeth. I think that would be an extremely messy thing to do while you're driving. (laughs) I don't understand, you know, where you spit. I I don't know what, you know, how any of that works. I've seen a person actually eating a bowl of cereal uh, while they're driving down the highways. And, 
you know, we want everyone to be good defensive drivers. And, and for people to be a good defensive driver, really you need to have both hands on your steering wheel and paying attention. You know, holding a bowl of cereal with your knees and driving with one hand uh, is not a good combination. So people just need to remember, be good defensive drivers and think about you and everyone else on the roadway. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the message we always say, especially during uh, Work Zone Safety Awareness Week, things like that. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a little bit, Todd. But let's let's talk about uh, something you mentioned in your previous um, statement, where you said, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to determine whether or not a phone was involved in a crash or something like that. So let's talk about when you can determine that a phone is involved in. Um, what do you guys look for out on the roadways when um, when you pull people over for being on their cell phones? Well, I'm not asking you to give away industry secrets or anything. but <laughs> Well, there's not really too many secrets. But, you know, typically what I do, and there's actually a couple things that I do. Uh, a lot of times what I will do is I will find a nice, safe spot uh, off of the roadway for me to sit, maybe in a parking lot. Uh, I, I try to find a spot that's a little bit higher than the roadway so I can get a clearer view. Because what I'm finding out now is a lot of people will be holding their phones low down near the steering wheel. So I like to find a, a spot that kind of sets me up a little bit. And I just watch traffic go by. And I also try to find a spot where the speed limit is below 40 miles an hour. Uh, I have a tendency of, of, of uh, having neck pain. If I'm watching traffic go by at 55, 60 <laughs> miles an hour, I get dizzy. So I try to find you know, a spot where they're slowing down at, a, at an intersection or something like that. But I'm basically looking for uh, drivers that are holding their phone. And, and that's, the, that's what's so nice about this law. All we have to do is find you or spot you holding your phone. And if you're holding your phone, you're in violation of the law. And um, it just makes it very easy to enforce this law. Now, also what I will do is um, on a multiple lane highway, like the Lloyd Expressway, a lot of cars are up and down that highway. What I will do is I will, you know, just basically travel, you know, make lane changes and so forth. I drive just a little bit over the speed limit. So I'm passing cars and I'm, as I'm passing, I'm looking at drivers to see what they're doing. And it's mind-boggling how many drivers that I find that are talking on their phone. And what's even more interesting is that there's a lot of times I'm able to drive side by side for quite some time before they realize there's a state trooper right beside me because they're so focused on what's going on directly in front of them that they're clueless that there's a police officer right beside them. Uh, so those are a couple different ways that we are uh, enforcing the law. Those are a couple ways that we're looking for the violations. Uh, but again, it's an extremely easy violation to detect now because of the, of the current law. Um, and I will tell you that there's a lot of people still are very confused about things that they can do and what they can't do. I have stopped uh, several people for holding their phone, and then after stopping them, they explain that they are delivering pizza or they're delivering something, and they're using that phone as a navigation device. And that's perfectly fine. You can use your phone for a GPS, but the key thing is, is that you can't hold the phone. You have to mount it somewhere. If you put it in a, in a mount on your dash or somewhere down low where you can see it, then that's not a violation. But if you choose to hold that phone while you're driving and you're looking at it, that is a violation of the law. Uh, I'm also stopping motorists that are holding their phone and talking through the speaker. Again, it doesn't make any sense, but you can't do that. You can talk through the speaker, but again, you cannot hold your phone. You can place it in a bracket on your dash or on your console, but the key thing to remember is that you can talk on your phone, you can use it as a GPS, but you cannot hold your phone. And uh, as long as you can remember that, you won't have any issues. Uh, and those are the things that we're looking for. Yeah, and that's a great clarification too, because you know a lot of people think, oh, I've got my speakerphone on, so I'm good. But it's, you know, 
they, they make them for cup holders now. Right. You know, you can get a bracket, you can get something where you're hands free. And, and it's not like this is a new thing. I mean, you know, NDOT put up signs when the law went into effect that said holding your phone is prohibited and it's got the Indiana code number under yes. it. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're on a year anniversary now of of this law being so i mean we're p- drivers are running out of excuses for these <laughs> things right they are they are uh and i will tell you that during the first year throughout the entire state of indiana there were 5428 tickets that were issued that number is still fairly low when you stop and think how many drivers we have up and down our highways but remember you know, COVID-19 really changed uh, a lot uh, with yeah. how law enforcement reacted during the first several months. Uh, but also, almost 11,000 people were warned. So we are making traffic stops. We're letting people know that they're in violation. Uh, I really believe the second year, those numbers will be a lot higher. And I really believe we will see fewer people on their phones. Now, you know, when I'm out working, I'm looking for this violation every single day because I know it may, it will make a difference. I personally is seeing or I'm seeing a big difference. You know, I before I would sit at an intersection and within a matter of seconds, I would be able to see someone on their phone. Uh, now, not so much. Uh, sometimes I'm waiting 10, 15 minutes before I see a violation. So I am seeing a big difference. One thing that I am noticing, though, is drivers looking down toward their lap more. Mm -hmm. So I I really believe that now their phone is down on their lap. I can't tell what they're doing. So I hate to say this. I can't I can't conduct a traffic stop because, you know, they could be uh, thinking about, hey, should I eat another French fry or is there a phone down there? Uh, So I, I can't do anything. But I am noticing more people looking down, which is always very concerning. Uh, but again, we will continue to educate the motoring public, um, you know, and I, I will back up just a second. It's, it's, it's a little frustrating when we stop young teenagers for the violation. And I, and I say that because teenagers from the very beginning have been taught not to text and drive, uh, that they can't use their cell phones uh, for the first 90, no, actually first for the first 180 days because of the probationary violation. But we are seeing kids committing these violations, you know, within the first several months. And, and that's very concerning. If, if a young person is already not worried about violating the law, then what are they going to be doing a year or two years down the road? So that's always concerning. And then also, I think another thing to point out is now that we have the one-year anniversary, the BMV is now starting to not necessarily fine you, but they start putting points against your driver's license. The first year, if you got stopped for violating the law, you got a ticket, you had to pay a fine, but there were no points. Now, if you get stopped and convicted of the hands-free law, then there are points. I don't know whether it's a two- or four-point violation, but obviously you don't want to have any points against your driver's license. So you want to make sure that you don't hold your phone while you're driving down the highway. And I will, and one other thing too is a lot of people think that when they're stopped at a traffic light or they're stopped at a stop sign, that you still can't look at your phone or hold your phone, I should say. But the law says you're in violation if you are in motion. So remember, if you are stopped at a traffic light, and you know sometimes you're stopped for 45 seconds to a minute, uh, it's okay to hold your phone to look. Um, so just just remember, a lot of people are are looking and seeing people do it, doing that at intersection and they think that's a violation and they're calling and, and complaining. But if they're stopped at a traffic light or stopped in traffic because of bumper to bumper traffic and so forth, if they're stopped, technically by law, they can hold their phone. But once they start moving, they have to put the phone down. Yeah, that's an excellent clarification because I've heard on multiple occasions, you know, hey, even if you're stopped at a stoplight, if you've got your phone in your hand, right, you're in violation. So thank you for that yes. clarification. And, Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. no, no, no. You're fine. Well, and I was going to say, sometimes, you know, that still creates some problems at intersections because if someone's on their phone, they're not paying attention to the light. And mm-hmm. what happens now the light turns green and I'm busy down here scrolling through Facebook. 
Now the people behind me start honking their horns and now sometimes aggressive driving and road rage starts. So, you know, we always, you know, want people to be paying attention to what's going on around. And that's why we don't want anybody on their smartphones when they're driving. But we have to pick uh, pick and choose our little battles. And, you know, we're going to be okay with people looking at their phones while they're stopped. But still be aware that you need to be paying attention to that traffic light. Yeah, absolutely. So, Todd, let's take a break here. We've uh, we've gone 18 minutes now and haven't had a commercial break. Okay. We'll go ahead. And, well, we got to have that. We got to. So we'll go ahead and take a break. But then when we come back, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about summer travel. We've got a lot of people on the roads, a lot of vacations going on, a lot of work zones out there. So when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about what ISP is doing to help us in work zones and what you guys are looking for. We'll be right back with more on the DOT. There's never been a better time to start your career with NDOT. Entry-level positions now start at $19 an hour, and with a CDL, you can earn even more. Go to NDOTjobs.com or text NDOTcareers to 468-311 to apply now. Did you know that NDOT also has an eye on the sky? NDOT inspects nearly 120 aviation facilities in Indiana, including seaplane bases and heliports. To learn more about these and other multimodal programs, go to multimodal.ndot.in.gov. We're more than just Hoosier Roads. Welcome back to On the DOT. I'm Jason Tiller, and I'm joined by ISP Sergeant Todd Ringel. And Todd, uh, last segment we talked a lot about the new hands-free law and how uh, effective it's really been and and what you guys are kind of looking for out there on the roadways and just a lot of really good educational information about what Indiana hands-free means. But let's shift gears now and let's talk about, you know, we're in the height of summer. COVID-19 is... For all intents, I won't say it's over because it's not over, but we have a lot more people on the roads because a lot more things have opened up. The world has become less restrictive, Um, so it means more people are taking vacations. We've, uh, you know, the number, the traffic counts are higher. We've got more work zones out there than ever before. Let's talk about summer travel. Let's talk about some safety tips. Let's talk about, you know, work zone, what ISP is doing to help uh, keep work zones safe as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, Work zones are a very important topic. Um, We typically have a number of work zones that we concentrate on every single year. We have overtime projects where we put troopers in work zones and they do nothing but to, you know, work and uh, patrol the area to ensure that everyone that's traveling through there is doing so safely. Um, You know, the biggest problem in our work zone areas are typically that area right before the work zone where everyone is, you know, changing lanes or going into that one lane. And, you know, we always encourage people that when you see the signs that tell you work zone is ahead, merge, you know, that's the time you need to put your phone down, uh, we want you to avoid all distractions. You know, if you're talking to a bunch of people inside the car, stop, pay attention to what's going on. Uh, we see a lot of rear end collision crashes. We see a lot of crashes, uh, that occur as those lanes are restricted. And then once you're in a work zone, remember that there are a lot of workers that in some cases that are working very close to the roadway that you're traveling in. And, you know, these guys are working very hard. It's very hot. And you know what? They do make mistakes sometimes. And, you know, they may step out into the roadway or they may drop something. They are trying to catch something. And unfortunately, we typically have some work zone workers that are struck every year. And we got to pay attention to what's going on in those work zones. We have to reduce our speeds and keep a watchful eye out for those workers. Um, Also, there are typically large trucks that are going into or coming out of those work zones. And those trucks, you know, it takes a while for them to build up speed. Uh, So we have to be very aware of those, drive the speed limit, better yet, you know, drive below the speed limit, follow at a safe distance. Again, most of the crashes that we see in work zones are those rear end uh, collisions. And it's simply because drivers are slowing down or some cases even stopping and the other drivers are not paying attention and therefore they're striking other vehicles. But please be very responsible. Do your part in those construction zones and drive responsibly. Yeah, absolutely. And that's always a message. Of course, we, we at NDOT, we're, we're administrating those work zones. So obviously we don't want any of our contractors or any of our employees to be uh, injured in work zones. But one of the numbers that I always talk about um, 
whenever we do work zone safety awareness week is that national statistics actually show that four out of five people injured in work zone crashes are actually not the workers. You're absolutely correct. So, I mean, it's a public safety thing, you know, from, from our standpoint to say, Hey, you know, you know, our workers, you know, they're, they're in danger certainly, but so is the motoring public. I think that's a great point, and I'm glad you brought that up, because I think a lot of people do think that all these extra patrols are to protect the highway workers. And don't get me wrong, we care for those highway workers, but more people are killed and injured traveling through the work zone than those highway workers. So again, we want everyone to be safe. Uh, Another thing that is very concerning is those secondary crashes. Uh, and sometimes, you know, they're, they're working in or they, they occur in the work zones, but l- just maybe a little off topic. But we see secondary crashes creating a lot of issues on the highways. And, and what happens is when, when we have a major crash, as people are driving by, for whatever reason, they feel the need to videotape or take pictures. Well, not only is that a violation of the law now, but when you're taking a video or taking pictures, your eyes are not on the roadway. They're looking at this horrific sight. And when we have a secondary crash, typically that secondary crash is even more serious. And now we have more problems. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to enforce the law when we're busy working a serious crash. But there have been times that we will track you down and cite you for that violation. So please keep that in mind. But, you know, one thing that we're always worried about during the summer, because we know that a lot of people will be traveling a long distance, is fatigue driving. We want you to be well rested. Uh, it, It makes more sense to get a good night's sleep than hit the road versus taking a nap, getting up at midnight and driving you know, from midnight to eight o'clock in the morning because traffic is very low. We're we're meant to be sleeping between midnight and eight o'clock in the morning. And I personally have tried that before and I will never do it again because all I all I was doing was fighting to stay awake. And I was in a dangerous situation. I put my family at risk. It doesn't make sense to do that. If you're driving and you notice that you're having a hard time staying awake, you're yawning, your eyes are are constantly closing, uh, you nod off, you don't remember going by a certain uh, exit or your vehicle runs off the roadway, those are fantastic signs that you are tired. You need to get off the roadway, take a nap, uh, better yet let someone else drive, but but have a plan. Think ahead and, and be well rested before you take that long trip. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to jump in here and talk about this because, you know, I've personally, like like you, I've been in that situation where I've been tired driving. What does someone do in that situation? Let's say you're driving and maybe it's a, a situation where you couldn't avoid it. You couldn't uh, couldn't plan ahead, but you're tired driving. Now, what do you do? Do you Are you allowed to stop on the side of the road? Do you get off on an exit? Like, how does that work? You know, that, that's a great question. We always suggest that you get off of the highway at an exit. Go to a gas station, if at all possible. You know, there are times where truck drivers will pull over on the interstate to take a nap. Granted, that's something that we don't want them to do. But then again, you got to stop and think, do we want this truck driver driving down the highway tired or do you want him off the roadway sleeping? And to be honest with you, I'd rather him be on the side of the roadway sleeping, but better yet, have a plan. And it's always best to be off of the interstate at a truck stop or a gas station because, you know, Every year we see a number of people who are tired that are driving down the highway and they leave the roadway and they strike another vehicle that's on the berm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Parking your vehicle on the berm is really a dangerous place to be. So it really is. I mean, if you look at the amount of, and I don't, I apologize for interrupting, oh. but I mean, if you look at the amount of attenuators we have hit in our work zones, um, you know, they're off to the side, Yes. but you know that, and maybe that ties into distracted driving. Maybe that ties into texting and driving and things like that, but it, there is an inherent risk. Yes. It's safer for someone to be, who's tired to be off the road, but still you want to be 
well off the road, not just off to the side. Yes, absolutely. You know, so if you need to take a nap, you need to get out of your car, walk around, get a cup of coffee or something like that. It is always best to do that in a safe parking lot, gas station parking lot, truck stop. But you got to remember to do that. Um, and if if for some reason you do stop on the side of the roadway, make sure that you keep your seatbelt on. Make sure mm-hmm. your kids keep their seatbelts on. But again, when you stop on the side of the roadway, you are putting yourself at risk. You're putting other drivers at risk. So it's always best to get off of the interstate into a safe area. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So, Todd, we are actually running down on time here. Um, it and goes by fast. It does. <laughs> it goes by so fast, especially when you're having such good conversation about such important issues. And I just I need to know because this is always something I maybe it's a prurient interest for me. I, I don't know. But I always love to hear stories about what you guys are seeing out there and interesting or fun or even just, you know, just an off the wall weird story. Do you have anything like that? Uh, you know what? You kind of <laughs> caught me off guard there. Uh, but I tell you what, one thing that happened just uh, maybe a week ago. Uh, I'm driving on the Lord Expressway, and I tell you what, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with the Lord Expressway, very Mm -hmm. busy highway down in Evansville. You see all kinds of things on the Lord Expressway. But I'm driving on the Lord Expressway in the middle lane. Not too many people drive the speed limit. Um, I'm doing just a little over 50 miles an hour in my Mark Patrol car, because if I do 50 miles an hour, it creates a big traffic problem. But as I'm driving down the highway, I see a car coming up on the left kind of hard, and it's obviously, you know, speeding. The driver's probably doing 60 plus miles an hour. And as he's starting to pass me, I look over and guess what? He's on his phone. Uh, so I made a traffic stop. And the bottom line is, is he was so focused on that conversation, he didn't even notice that I was in a fully marked police car. Mm-hmm. So those are the things that we see often. Uh, and again, that's why... I'm a true believer that talking on your phone, even though technically by law you can talk on your phone, is a big distraction. We'll never be able to get uh, a law that prevents people from talking on their phone, but talking on their phone is a big distraction. Uh, But, you know, we we see all kinds of interesting things out there on the highways. Um, You know, we have good stories, sad stories, interesting stories. Um, but, uh, you kind of caught me off guard, but that's, <laughs> that's the best I have right now. Fair enough. That's, okay. that's So, so what does ISP have coming up? Uh, any initiatives, any summer, um, you know, programs coming up, anything that you guys have going on? Well, actually on? we are in the hiring process again. You know, we're, we're, we're really struggling finding good candidates, mm-hmm. uh, but we're always looking for men and women that want an interesting career with Indiana State Police. So if you are interested or if you know someone that may be interested in a great career, uh, this is my 36th year, and I'll be honest with you, I still love my job. I still love going to work every single day. Uh, But if you're interested, go to our website. All the information is right there, how to apply, and you might be able to be an Indiana State Trooper. Very good. Todd, where can people find you on social media? Well, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at ISP Evansville or on Facebook at Sergeant Todd Ringel dash Indiana State Police. Uh, I post a lot of great information on our social media sites, and I'd love for you to follow me. Not only does he post great information, but you, you will find a master class on how to use emojis, just <laughs> well, so you know. I, I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Todd, thank you for being on the DOT. Thanks, Jason. Somebody needs to report that pothole. Why aren't they mowing the grass in the median? When are they going to fix this road? You know there's an easy way to get answers to those questions and report the problems you see on interstates, U.S. routes, and state roads. Dial 1-855-INDOT4U to talk to a live customer service professional. That's 855-463-6848. Hate talking on the phone or have a fear of human interaction? We've got you covered. Go online to indot the number 4 the letter u, dot com to use our Report a Concern tool. You can also report a concern through our Indot mobile app for iPhone and Android. If you've got questions, we've got answers at 855-INDOT4U or online at indot4u.com. Thank you for listening to On the DOT. Be sure and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoy this show, please spread the word by leaving us a five-star review. Indot is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and also on the web at indot.in.gov. The INDOT app for Apple and Android devices can be a handy tool if you're looking for road conditions or project information. To report a concern on a number state route, 
U.S. route or interstate, please call our toll-free number at 1-855-NDOT4U. You can also report your concerns online 24-7 at ndot4u.com. Thank you for listening and safe travels.